Hello there, Aquarius, and welcome to your 2019 six-month forecast. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a look at the first six months of the year of 2019 for you. Uh, this is a general reading. Please keep that in mind. So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Yes. Uh, for this reading, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking one card from the major arcana of the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Dreams of Gaia Tarot here. Um, this is a fairly new deck to me. I've had it for some time, so um, I haven't really been using it that much. So uh, if need be, I will be going into the book a little bit just to get some key points and keywords, but I will be mostly doing this intuitively here. So one card for each month of the first six months of the year, and then I'm going to clarify with a traditional, a traditional tarot deck, that being the Crystal Visions deck, yes? So uh, this reading is available for personal consumption, so if you would like a personal look into the for, into potentially the first six months of the year for you, or also any other progression of months, regardless of when you may come across this video, please go ahead and send me an email. They are available for personal consumption, yes? So with that said, let's get straight into it for you, Aquarius. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please help us have a greater understanding of what is to come for Aquarius for the first six months of 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so Aquarius, let's get straight into this, yeah? For your month of January, let's see what we've got. For Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're gonna try that one again. Let's try that again. For Aquarius, for the month of January, here we go. Healing, all right. For February, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, we have Perception. Okay, now, it, it, already healing is going to lead to a greater perception here for you. March, we've got Thought. April. For Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. April, <laughs> we've got Death and Rebirth. All right. May. For Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May. May, May, May for Aquarius. There we go. Self. Excellent. That actually is a really great card to come after death. Well, uh, death and rebirth. Well, you know what? You know, that makes perfect sense because it is in succession. Death and rebirth is 13. Self is 14. Huh. Would you look at that? <laughs> All right. And for June... Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For June 2019, we have love. That's excellent. All right, so you're starting off the year bang with a, excuse me, you're starting off the year with a bang, Aquarius. Um, you're, you're definitely moving into some healing energy. And I really feel like this is carrying over from potentially November or December. For some of you, this is a situation that, um, you know, is a healing process that had kind of maybe started during the, the kickoff of the holiday season, which would have been uh, Thanksgiving. For some of you, that's kind of what I'm picking up here. And so this healing is going to allow you to perceive differently with perception. Um, how you're perceiving the, the reality of your life, how you're perceiving the world around you, reality as a whole is most likely going to be the focus for the month of February. Moving into March, you have thought. And so obviously your change in perception is going to lead to a change of thought. Um, it's going to, I'm seeing that it's going to lead into an analysis of, the, of your thoughts and um, it, the actual change in perception is going to lead to almost like a dialogue between yourself of, of looking back on how you may have perceived things in the past and how that could potentially change moving forward. From there, you have death and rebirth. So, I mean, this all, it's really interesting because all of this, for all of the signs, it's really uh, a real 
storyline type progression here. Um, Death and Rebirth is coming after Thought, which is in the month of April. Um, and this is the kickoff of, well, spring officially starts in the month, uh, the end of March, and then it's leading to a change in you in April. For May, it's like you're getting more connected with your higher self, with your true self. And then for June, you have love. And to me, this is unconditional love. This is the condition, unconditional love for yourself. Um, and it's also, uh, I want, I'm seeing that as a type of union or a greater union within yourself, okay? So for your month of January, we have healing. And like I said, this is for some of you, this is an energy that really kind of kicked off for a lot of you or, or for at least for a, a portion of you. This is an energy that started, excuse me, guys. Okay, sorry about that. It looks like there's some sort of, Film. Sorry, guys. Give me just a second. Camera's fine. Okay. Anyway, um, it's looking like there's some sort of uh, healing that was really kicked off during the holiday season. That's for just a portion of you. For others of you, this is something that goes far, way back, way, way back, a, a number of years. This is something that's deeply rooted within you, um, and it's all leading to a change in perception. I feel like you're finally healing from some sort of trauma or some sort of past experience um, that has led you on a certain course, okay? And now you, in January, you have a, a chance to heal from that. And that makes perfect sense because January is, is like a, a slow down, a cool down. The holiday season is officially over. Um, you know, you've spent time with family and friends. A lot of people spend a good amount of money. And so when January comes, they're not really looking to spend too much. They're not really looking to do too much activity. Also, we're in like the dead middle of winter here. Like winter is really just starting to kick off and get to be a thing. So there really isn't too much activity. So it does lend for um, some healing activities here. Let's get some clarica clarification for you, Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of January 2019. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have the chariot that's coming out upright. Underneath the deck is the world. Look at that. Okay, so you definitely have the ending of some sort of cycle, some sort of saga, um, a major cycle in your life, and it looks like you're setting yourself up to move forward quite quickly, okay, into the new that's coming into your life. You have the High Priestess and you have the Page of Pentacles. Now, the High Priestess is coming out in January here for healing is really quite perfect because the High Priestess, a lot of the time, talks about secrets, yes, but she also talks about the intuition and the wisdom that is gained from your intuition, the intuition or the wisdom of your higher self even. And I really feel like a lot of you are going to be dealing with some healing that's going to allow you to open up your intuition here with the High Priestess. And this really could be the ending of a cycle of... Um, or a saga, I wanna say saga for some reason. For some of you, it might be somewhat of a saga, but this is the ending of a period in which you were closed off to your intuition, potentially for some of you, um, or you just were, maybe you were at odds with it. And here with the Page of Pentacles, this is the energies of devotion, honesty, uh, commitment, um, and this is, I really feel like for some of you, this is the commitment to learn something new, learning something new. So actually some of you might be starting some sort of schooling or at least embarking on a new journey to learn something new here. But either way, you're really going to be moving forward quite quickly or at least swiftly enough or there the in this healing that you would be doing in January or experiencing that in January, would be clearing the passage for you to move quite swiftly with the chariot energy that came out here, okay? So now for February, let's talk about perception. There's definitely a change in, perspe in, in uh, perception here. I think, did I say perception? <laughs> I think <laughs> I was, I was, I, I, it, uh, perception is a is a hybrid between uh, perception and um, perspective, right? <laughs> <laughs> but perception, um, some of you are really, you're going to be looking at things very differently. 
very, very differently. And there really is not going to be um, a way around this. It's just going to be, you know, your perception changes changes due to the healing that you're experiencing. And now you kind of have to look at things quite differently. And I fe I'm feeling like for some of you now, Aquarius, you are a fixed sign. So big changes are things that are not really something that you're a big fan of. Um, they can be quite unsettling to you. So I can already feel a lot of the resistance for this because for many of you, it's gonna look or feel or seem like you don't have a choice in this or you didn't choose this or you don't have an option in this. But the here, the thing about that is we're all here during this time period on the planet in order to go through this change, okay? To um, expand and to grow in this way with the planet. So you did kind of elect to be here at this time. And as an Aquarius, if you are resonating greatly with Aquarian energy and then and the fixed element or the fixed nature of Aquarian energy, the difficulty of this shift is part of the grand design of your life, okay? So let's get some clarification on perception here for the month of February for Aquarius. We've got the Wheel of Fortune. Look at that. That is quite poignant. Yeah, look at, see, man, wow. You got the Wheel of Fortune and you've got the Fool. Ooh-wee. Underneath the deck, you have the Ace of Pentacles, Aquarius. Look at that. So you definitely are embarking on a brand new journey. You're doing a lot of mental healing here with perception. So what this is really helping you see, it could, now I just heard for some of you, it's see, helping you see the error of your ways. But that's not a big thing. That's not a big condemnation from the universe here. It's just helping you see where you may have seen things a little bit um, in a way that may, was just a detriment to you. It wasn't serving your highest good to see things in this way. And so now you're seeing it differently. You're moving forward. You're changing the way you see things. You're doing some mental healing here with the Wheel of Fortune and the Six of Swords. And that's leading you on a brand new journey. Um, this is really, this really is you, Aquarius, that I'm, I'm feeling here. Not that this card, the Fool, officially represents your energy. It's just, I really feel like this truly is you by the time, should you be doing the work also in the month of February. It's setting you up, Ace of Pentacles also, it's setting you up for a brand new start and you're going to have the opportunity to take a leap of faith towards something. Wow, Queen of Cups, Knight of Cups. For some of you, this is an energy of uh, generating an offer from some sort of partner. You actually, Aquarius, could be making some sort of offer towards someone or some sort of gesture towards someone maybe that you were at odds with in the past, um, that you maybe you had a misunderstanding with, with in the past. I'm seeing the Queen of Cups is Cancerian energy. The Knight of Cups is Pisces energy. Um, you could be dealing with either one of these. But it's the archetypes here that really are the, have the most meaning. The archetype of Cancer being unconditional love. The archetype of Pisces being also being unconditional love but inclusive wanting to reach out wanting to make a connection maybe wanting to re uh, uh, reconcile or apologize in some way this could be you or this could be someone else um, seeing you differently but since you are the focus here I really see that for some of you you could be making changing and now this did well no a lot of the other ones did come out um, face down so but i am also picking up an energy of this is where you start to see differently and if it is a fault if, if, if the situation is involving another person you could be seeing oh wow maybe i should look at this differently maybe i maybe they weren't who i made them out to be or maybe the situation wasn't what i made it out to be that kind of energy wow that's great. Now, this, this really feels excellent, Aquarius. So now we're getting into thought. And this is where the real rough and tumble of the situation is coming out. Because now that your perception has adjusted, we'll say even changed, now all the, thoughts, all the thoughts start to happen. Um, it's like this is the month of processing in March. Okay? With thought. This is the month of processing. You're seeing things differently and now... Seven of Swords. Okay, deception. Um, may, how have you been deceiving yourself in the past? Ooh, Nine of Swords. Look at that. 
How are you deceiving yourself? Um, this is the, these are the fears and the anxieties. It's almost as if, okay, so now that your perception has changed, how can you get others' perceptions to change? Uh, others' perceptions of you to change. I'm picking up on some of that for you guys here. Oh, there's that high priestess again. All right, underneath the deck, you have the three of wands. Okay, but it's not like you're, heart, you're getting heartbroken. There may be some heartbreak coming about, some wounds that are reopening, but to me, the Three of Swords is the focus here. It's not necessarily something that's actually breaking your heart. It's you seeing how um, you could have been acting in a heartbreaking way, how you could have ha broken others' hearts with you or the way you were perceiving things and thus the way you were reacting to situations. You could be seeing how you were deceiving yourself also and thus breaking your own heart with the Seven of Swords energy. But I do, I, do, I am picking up an energy of suffering in silence a little bit here needing and, and secrecy yes there's a lot of secrecy in march and i that's the energy of suffering in silence i really feel like for some of you that could be the theme of march for you personally so that you can process all of what's really going on and what's changing for you wow you have the three of pentacles and you have the Page of Pentacles yet again. You also have the King of Swords. So here you are. Other than the star, the King of Swords would be your archetype or symbolizing your energy in um, the fixed element of Aquarius. Yes. And then you have the Four of Swords. So this is definitely a month of rest, secrecy, secrecy and processing your thoughts. And because your perception has gone through this transformation, or is in the process currently of going through this transformation. This Four of Swords respite type energy coupled with the Three of Pentacles, the energy of self-mastery, is allowing you to go through this process and change, see things differently, okay? Wow, this is really great. And so now that leads you because honestly, with the, with the King of Swords energy, you're seeing things as they truly are. You're being as diplomatic as possible. I mean, that is your energy. So it's almost as if you're using your own energy on yourself. Seven of Cups in between, um, Seven of Cups is coming out for you right now. And so um, again, change of perception. It's almost like it's opening doors for you. You're starting to see the possibilities with this new uh, change in perception, okay? And then we get into April. April is a month of death and rebirth, all right? So now that you've had some time to process your thoughts, to go through this change in perception, you have the actual transformation, transformational energies This uh, within the month of April, okay? Now, death and rebirth symbolizes gestation. Obviously, it's transformation. This can be seen as the death card in the, the major arcana here. Transformation, all right? You have the four of cups so far. Hey, look at that. The wheel of fortune just flipped over. Uh, again, so you have the Wheel of Fortune coming out again, and this obviously is uh, a, massive sh a massive shift. This really is a big shift for you, Aquarius. Underneath the deck, hey now, underneath the deck, you've got the Empress, all right? So rebirth, there you go, abundance, okay? You have the King of Pentacles, you've got the Magician, excellent, and you also have the Ten of Cups. So, so you're, because you're seeing clearly now, you have the chance to really focus and ground yourself, okay? The King of Pentacles is here. This is another fixed energy. This is Taurus specifically. Could be another Earth sign, but I'm getting this is grounding, okay? And with the Magician here, you're manifesting the new in the face of this change with the Wheel of Fortune, all right? With the Four of Cups, you're going through an energy of um, questioning, reanalyzing, focusing on self-love with the Four of Cups here. Uh, this is how it's depicted in this deck. In other decks, this individual, the individual in the card would be 
focused on the other three cups instead of the ace of cups that's being presented to them but in this deck this person is focused on the ace of cups and this ace of cups is the only one that has the a lotus in the cup the other three cups are empty so it's like this person isn't even paying attention to anything else but their own self which makes perfect sense and that's going to lead to the basically the realization of how one can manifest their ten of cups their ultimate wish fulfillment. For some of you, this has to do with family. But this makes perfect sense. Why? Because in the month of May, you've got the self. All right, so I do actually, before I go any further, I do want to read a little bit of that card um, because I'm being called to. Let me just shuffle this a little bit here. Give this one more shuffle, and then I'm going to read card number 14 of self. And understand that, look, you have a progression here. You're going from card number 13, which is death and rebirth, to card number 14, which is self. Yeah? So let's read a little bit about this. Here we go. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm totally wrong. I'm reading that wrong. Aha! <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm totally off. I can't read Roman numerals, apparently. But this is card... Death and Rebirth is card number eight. Not 14. Look at that. Look at that. I can't read Roman numerals. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway... Yeah, sorry about that. But this is a good progression here. It's the it's the right progression because, you know, you had the Four of Cups representing death and rebirth. And so now you have the self, which is the Four of Cups in that in this deck was representing a, a, a focus on the self, right? And here you have the self. So let's read a little bit about, about this here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Self, I am, identity, self-realization, self-manifestation, center, peace, acceptance. Key phrases, establish a unique and individual identity, be free of definitions and labels, have unlimited potential. How has your past shaped you? Identity is fluid and changing. Who you are is for you to determine. Are you trying to fit in with the wrong crowd? Know who you are. Who do you wish to become? A path of loving expansion. Let go of herd mentality. Think for yourself. Excellent, Aquarius. I mean, that's beautiful energy here. So now let's get some clarification for you. This is for your month of May. One more shuffle. All right, and so I'm already seeing that as you go through this process, you, you change in perception, uh, analyzing it all, death and rebirth, and now a focus on the self. As you re are reborn, you're moving into a greater sense of self-love here. So let's see what we've got for you, Aquarius. All right, we have some cards that have flipped over. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, we have... The Five of Swords, self-defeating energies, the Three of Wands. So this is uh, this is really a chance to really understand how you have hurt yourself. In essence, underneath the deck is the unknown, and so you're diving. Basically, I'm seeing this as you're diving into your shadow side, your shadow elements, the shadow sides of you, the parts of you that kept you from maybe really being true to yourself or being true to, to the self that you wanted to be, maybe. Three of Wands is the energy of uh, re waiting for a return on an investment, but this is um, having made a decision and now doing the work to gain the outcome. But look at that, you guys, the Two of Wands. So you have this progression from the Two of Wands to the Three of Wands. So it's time to, you're going to be, it looks like you're going to need to make a decision here um, as to which way you want to now take your life, in which way you want to express yourself. Um, and this is diving into the unknown. This is, get ha this is having an open mind, um, needing, at least needing to have an open mind in order to make the de best decision moving forward. This is also being comfortable with the unknown. You're not going to know everything. The universe is not going to give you all of the answers. There are some things that you're not 
going to be able to know about before you make your decision. But you'll always have enough energy or enough knowledge to make the decision in the moment. And at any moment later on, you can change or adjust your course given new energy or new um, information comes through. Okay. So now finally, you have for your month of June, you've got love. And I, for this, I'm hearing unconditional self-love. Now, for some of you, you definitely could be attracting new love, especially with this change in, perspe in perspective, change in perception. Um, you really could be honoring yourself in a better way or maybe even just a different way and that helps bring love into your life, whether that's your own unconditional self-love or maybe that's a, the love of another. But let's see. Okay, woo-wee, all right. Underneath the deck, you have the Six of Wands. So this is a victorious month for you, um, even though some of these cards are looking like it may not be. Um, Four of Cups, again, Nine of Wands, Six of Pentacles in reverse, and the Moon. We're gonna start there. So um, deception, lies, fear even with the moon. But this is, I really feel like um, with the energies of the Four of Cups, again, of analyzing, of questioning, seeking deeper knowledge, I feel like you're going to be recognizing how maybe some of your relationships have been imbalanced. Maybe you haven't given as much as others have. I feel like for some of you that is kind of, kind of a thing. Um, and I use this I use this term lightly, but I'm going to tell you guys how I feel it or see it. Um, there's a bit of entitlement here that you're coming to terms with, or at least some of you. And that could maybe even that doesn't have to be you. That could be some of the people that you've had around you in the past. But I feel like for some of you, it definitely is a sense of entitlement that was in with, with within you. Six of Wands, pride and ego, right? Um, that has kept you going down the same process um, and that has maybe cut you off from some like true love or even self-love okay because this uh, it, it feels like this almost was a defense mechanism with the nine of wands all right but I'm, also what we have here ooh, chow we've got strength the lovers in reverse and the ace of swords in reverse Please excuse the um, the pause. I'm really just trying to channel the energies. What I'm feeling from this right now is there's still some sort of energy of maybe not seeing something clearly with the moon. I mean, the moon is about deception. It could be fear. And I feel like some, there could be, for some of you, there could be um, love coming in and you may not be giving to the situation like you maybe feel like you should be or what is appropriate for because of fear with the moon, um, lack of clarity. Uh, you might be you might be trying to extend your love to someone else or they might be ex trying to extend it to you. And there could be an energy of unrequited love, potentially a missed opportunity, potentially. I am seeing that this could be a victory for some of you. Um, for some, because you do have the lovers here, for some of you, you could be getting over an unrequited love situation. Maybe where you gave your love to someone else and they didn't really return it. But there's definitely energies of pride and ego here with the Six of Wands, between the Six of Wands and Strength. But I, with Strength here, both of these are upright, Six of Wands and Strength. And with Strength here, I'm getting an energy of overcoming some sort of rejection and not giving up, not letting it get you down even with the Nine of Wands. I mean, it's, I, I don't like leaving <laughs> the reading on that note but at the same time, I see you overcoming it with strength. And for some of you, this really could be a realization of how you may have seen a love interest or a relationship in the past in a way that actually it wasn't as it truly was. 
You weren't seeing it for what it truly was with the Ace of Swords. Uh, I really feel like you could be overcoming that situation and that would be the victory there. All right, Aquarius, so there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own uh, six-month forecast from January to June or just anything in general, please go ahead and email me and I, I will get you all set up. But with that, I wish you all the best in 2019 and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Take care. Mwah. Bye.